Kalila Reynolds and welcome to Taking Stock. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. And we're coming this week from our brand new location at iCreate Studios on Hope Road. Come on, let's get this money. First up, both telecommunications giants Flow and Digicel face the music after being warned to step it up. Why do Jamaicans have to deal with such crappy service? They're here. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest stock market developments. How are they feeling about the new Mailpack IPO and the two rights issues that opened today? But first, here's What's Hot, brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. It was a big week for tourism last week. Marriott International signed a deal with the Amatera Jamaica Group. Marriott will be opening its first all-inclusive luxury resort in Jamaica. The 800-room resort will be about 25 miles outside Montego Bay. Construction is expected to begin in the first quarter of 2020 and completed in 2022. Meanwhile, construction is also set to begin early next year in Landover, St. Anne for Charisma's $1 billion U.S. dollar Sugarcane Bay multi-resort development. The project will add nearly 5,000 new rooms to Jamaica. Technology Minister Favel Williams says the country's two telecommunications companies, Digicel and Flow, can't meet the needs of the country. The minister says she's instructed both companies to take steps to improve their service. She says investments in modernizing the networks have not been fast enough to keep a pace with the growing bandwidth demand. Two IPOs are opening this Friday, November 22. Mailpack Group is inviting investors to apply for 500 million ordinary shares in the company. The shares are being sold at $1 each and a special reserved price for employees at $0.90 cents a share. Lead broker is NCB Capital Markets. Meanwhile, Lumber Depot is breaking away from its parent company, Blue Power Group, with an initial public offering of 141 million shares at $1.20 each. That offer also opens November 22. Mayberry is the lead broker and sole listing agent. The Bank of Jamaica BOJ intervened in the foreign exchange market three times last week, selling a total of 90 million U.S. dollars in consecutive flash auctions. This, as the local currency, hit its weakest point ever last Tuesday, 142.23 to 1 U.S. It rebounded on Friday to an average sell rate of $140.40. But the decline has been enough to prompt the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, to release a statement expressing fear. Earlier in the week, BOJ Governor Richard Biles blamed several large acquisitions by Jamaican companies for creating large demand for the dollar. What's Hot was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. When we come back, Digicel and Flow's communications managers are both here. Elon Parkinson and Keon Mitchell will join us. There's a surplus of unfilled jobs in the creative industry. Kickstart a creative career with iCreate Institute. Now I'm at iCreate, I just love it. I saw where I was learning things that I could utilize in my present job. And I have all the skills to do every basic animation thing now. Jumpstart a creative career with iCreate Institute at UCC. Visit iCreateEDU.com. segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agent. Insurance made easy. Welcome back to Taking Stock. Technology Minister Fable Williams says telecoms companies Digicel and Flow have not been keeping pace with the demand for bandwidth, resulting in all kinds of issues. She summoned them to a meeting last week. Here's more. Speaking in the House of Representatives last week, Technology Minister Favel Williams says Jamaicans are frustrated with the poor service from Digicel and Flow. Mr. Speaker, in the recent weeks and months, Jamaicans have been expressing frustration with the quality of service of our two major telecom providers. 
these complaints range from dropped calls in the middle of conversations which require the parties to try to reconnect. In the process, we lose valuable time and train of thought in the con various conversations from having to redial a call several times before the call goes through. Often as well, there's the inability to hear the other person on the other end and sometimes for them to hear us. Customers have complained of frequent interference on the line and a host of other issues. She criticized the providers for not modernizing their infrastructure fast enough. Number one, investments in modernizing networks have not, have not been fast enough to keep a pace with the growing bandwidth demand of consumers and applications, and thus today's infrastructure is inadequate for the country's needs. Opposition member Philip Paulwell added there needs to be more competition to force the providers to do better. Minister, it reminds me of when we were in a monopoly situation. Today we are in a duopoly situation. And I do believe that there is still space in the Jamaican telecoms market for more competition. It's competition that drives improvements. Meanwhile, Minister Williams said the government is moving to address the company's concerns about theft and vandalism. As a government, we must move sw more swiftly and I commit to working with my colleague ministers to strengthen legislation such as the Larceny Act, the Malicious Injuries to Property Act, and yes, the Scrap Metals Regulation. So you heard the minister's concerns and many of you have been complaining to me personally as well. Trust me, I have my own issues too. Well, they're here to respond. Elon Parkinson is Public Relations and Communications Manager at Digicel. And Keon Mitchell joins us from Flo. She's Senior Manager for Corporate Communications in the Northern Caribbean. Hi, welcome Keon and Elon. Thank Hi, you. Kalira. Thank you. What was the meeting about? We met with the minister earlier this week and it was really around providing an update on the network. Work. One of the things over the past few weeks, we've had some challenges and the quality of service is not what our customers have expected of us. And you know, we apologize for that because that's really not the experience we want our customers to have. So the minister had us um, come in for a meeting to share with her what was happening with regard to the network and the experience of um, our customers and also to get from us what are our plans in terms of our investments and you know, where are we going in terms of expanding and bringing more customers into the digital space. Mm -hmm. So we would have provided a very comprehensive update to her on both networks, mobile and fixed, in terms of our roadmap, the work we were doing, such as expanding our LTE coverage, connecting more homes to our grid, and um, pretty much indicating our commitment to ensuring that we resolve the issues in the shortest possible time frame and bring more Jamaicans into the connected space. But it's really a, a heavy burden for any investor to bear because you're looking at delivering on a commitment of bringing more Jamaicans into the connected space. Mm -hmm. You're looking at expanding into areas where you have communities who have never been online. And every time you have these cuts, you have to be redirecting that investment to treat with replacing infrastructure that you would have already put in place. Mm -hmm. And in some communities, it's a repeated challenge. I mean, we have communities with experienced vandalism up to 10 times. Wow. You know? So when you think of that from a purely business sense, it is clear that we have a very big challenge on our hands. And so the ministers, um, her, her remarks earlier this week in Parliament are welcomed. It's been a long time coming, and we're happy that we now yeah, have the support, and we're looking forward to working with her, uh, the other so ministers, the and before? all of that to, to address the problem in a very comprehensive you didn't have the way. Before? I'd say we welcome the strong support in terms of collaborating, bringing well, everybody to the you table. Didn't have it before. I think we could I have had greater that. support. We had a temporary ban in place. But the scrap the, metal. Yes, a temporary so ban was in place, but even with the ban in place, we've been seeing increasing trends. So Elon, the biggest complaint I have about Digicel is that the calls keep dropping. 
or sometimes the calls don't come through at all. I can tell you I have my phone in my hand some days. I have it right here in my hand. I look down, three missed calls, and my phone never rang. What's up with that? You know, that's a kind of service experience that we regret, and it happens mainly because of the optimization work that we're doing around the LTE upgrades. We started the LTE journey in June 2016, having first introduced the technology to Jamaica, and ever since we've been upgrading the network. As we do, you will appreciate that we will have to take some systems offline in order mm -hmm. to you know, create the necessary space for the new technology to be introduced. And when that happens, it's usually a local issue, perhaps emanating from the site that you're now connected to. Um, you can have the specter of missed calls. So we really apologize to customers for this, and what we try to do is to manage their expectations by sending out messages ahead of time when our technical teams are working in those areas to say, look, you may have some service disruption as a result of optimization work that we're doing to increase bandwidth, speeds, general network reliability and coverage. I hear you all both coming here to apologize for customers. You say you're working on it, but some people say it's too late to apologize, <laughs> you know? There are people who just are fed up with the service from both Flow and Digicel. Yeah, you know, we, we get it, mm -hmm. we, we get it. And you know, let me use this opportunity to even declare a season of peace in the telecoms industry where we attack this problem head Does on. Does the peace come with free credit? <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> but what it comes with is a commitment that we're gonna fix things. And it comes with that commitment primarily because we now have this armor of greater support from the minister in terms of the, the um, regulations and the law in particular around um, theft, vandalism at our cell sites. Right now, that's treated as a simple last nail offense, mm -hmm. right? What should it be? It should be something that mirrors a threat to national security. Mm -hmm. When you Absolutely. consider the importance of communications in this mm -hmm. day and age, you cut off communication and you're able to commit certain offenses as a result of people not being able to call for help, mm. right? Including the state apparatus. So did right? you bring that up in the, in the meeting? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And what was the response, Kian? There's a, there's a great amount of recognition for the challenges and the fact that it does leave our citizens vulnerable. Um, that's a fact. It's something that we've spoken about repeatedly. The fact that it's a threat to national security, it compromises their education infrastructure in terms of students, teachers, parents who will have to prepare their papers, you know, do research, all of that. And it also impacts our businesses. So there's also the impact on the economy in terms of productivity loss when you have acts of vandalism. So there's a very wide range in terms of the impact on the country. And that is why we welcome this collaborative approach We've been pretty much fighting this battle for a long time on our own. And we're happy to now have the weight of the minister's office as well as the other ministers behind us. Mm -hmm. but don't and you know, far too often people tend mm -hmm. to think that vandalism and theft when it comes on to large companies like ours is a victimless crime. You know, people, I've right. heard people say, but when I have insurance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. If we were to ever claim on an insurance policy for theft and vandalism, then our costs, our overall cost of doing business would go up significantly. So we have to try our best to absorb those costs the same and thing not like pass them on claim, to consumers. If you claim on your car insurance, your premiums go up. Precisely. Exactly. Same thing. Exactly. Claim on your health insurance, your premiums go up. Mm -hmm. But okay, so I hear you all with the apology. Elon, you, you declared a season of peace with the customers, Karen, I imagine you're extending an olive branch too. Absolutely. I Absolutely. think your customers right now want to hear a little bit more. Look, we are working around the clock to ensure that we resolve the issues. We're investing in the networks. We're ensuring that day by day, the, the experience is improving. This is certainly not the experience we want our customers to have. We've rolled out fantastic offers and they're taking advantage of that. We want to ensure that the network can facilitate the experience that we've promised. So day by day, as we continue to upgrade our mobile network, as we continue to secure our fixed network and work with others who may impact on that fixed network as well, for example, in the case of Roadworks, we are giving our customers a commitment that we're working on it, 
we, we ensure that their experience is going to be much better day by day. I'll give you the last word, Elon. You know, one of the things we're encouraged by is that as we enter into the evening of this um, network optimization, upgrade and improvement program, we're already seeing where customers are showing that, look, okay, I've gone through the worst, I've now seen better speeds on my, on my device, I'm now able to connect, and I'm now able to use my device like never before. And those are the experiences, those are the, those are the days we live for when our customers reach to that point. And I can commit to our customers that we'll continue to accelerate our program, our modernization program. We recently entered Eastern Jamaica with much success and very little disruption, by the way. We intend to continue that model into the new year when around the middle of 2020, we would have completed the bulk, if not all of this uh, modernization program. And as a result, bring them new services that they will absolutely love. All right, thanks for joining us, Kayon. Elon Parkinson, Digicel, and Flo. We take a break. When we come back, we'll have your market recap and the analysts are standing by. This segment of Taking Stock was brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. 81 stocks traded across both the main and junior markets of the JSC for the week ending Friday, November 15, 2019. 35 advanced, 36 declined and 10 traded firm. Wigton Wind Farm traded the most, with people buying and selling 71 million shares in the company. The stock gained 7 cents to close the week at $1 cent each. Sajikor Select Fund Financial declined, with people buying and selling nearly 41 million shares in the company. The stock closed at $1.11 cents. And QWI Investments was heavily traded, with over 10 million units being bought and sold. The financial firm lost two cents to close the week at $1.08 cents. Turning to the top advancers now, Proven Investments US dollar ordinary shares saw the biggest gain, its share price jumping nearly 30%. The company closed the week at 34 cents US. ISP Finance Services had the second highest gains to end the week at $32 a share. Its share price skyrocketed by 27%. And Mayberry Investments gained nearly 24%, its share price stopping just shy of $9. On the losing side now, CAC 2000 took the biggest price hit last week, losing nearly 21% of its value to close on Friday at $11. Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances was down 16% to close at $12.39, and Pulse Investments lost 14% of its share price, closing at $4.07. In this segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, is brought to you by Proven Wealth, Jamaica Money Market Brokers, and NCB Capital Markets. Welcome back to Taking Stock. I've got a team of analysts standing by. We're joined this week by equity trader at JMMB. His name is Clive Charlton. And Devroy Davis is back again. He's a stock market analyst and co-founder of Caribbean Value Investor. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you, Kalilo. Thank you. Thank you All right. Me. So let's start with you, Clive. Anything stood out on the market for you this week? There has been a lot. Yes, a lot. In fact, we have had you know, the announcement of several companies, prospective companies, are uh, raising uh, capital. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what is outstanding is that this is the first time I've had so many companies in a short time period seeking, or if it extends just a little bit over the last two weeks, that is seeking and has sought in excess of 20 billion Jamaican dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that is exceptional. That's when you add in JMMBs. Yeah. When I add JMMB, exclude JMMB, mm -hmm. it's probably about $9 billion, I'd say, the new prospective listies. Mm -hmm. Yes, That, I think, is significant. It's very significant, because right now we have, at the same time, opening, will be open at the same time. Lumber Depot came out, we take the show on a Friday. Yes. Came on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. A couple days before that, Mail Pack came out. Yes. We had opening on Monday, the day that this airs, we have the rights issues for MPC Caribbean Clean Energy and okay. Kingston Properties. And it's just a lot, Devroyd. Yes. What yes, do you have your is. eye on? For me, I'm looking at the fact that all of these new issues 
are, have also been creating new opportunities within the market. Um, we've seen where some of the stalwart companies, well, I consider them stalwart companies, the stock prices have been trending downwards. Um, so I look at a company like Wisinko, where the stock price has basically been stagnant despite the really good earnings that they posted. I look at Kingston Wars, where the stock price has come down now to around 68 near to $70. Also, I'm looking at these new issues. I'm looking at the fact that MailPack is currently out. They are seeking to raise the highest. For them, 495 million. Right. Million. Um, Actually, Kingston dollars. Properties Rights Issue is two billion. Two billion. And Kingston Properties Rights Issue. MPC be... Capital is roughly about three point two billion. Yeah, it's exactly. significant. So quite a few things to keep your eye out on. Um, we are seeing rebounds in some of the, st the other companies as well. So like MCB, we're seeing the stock move from two two hundred and four dollars being up now to two hundred and thirteen thereabout. So quite a few things. Interesting times in the market, I must say. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Clive, have you looked at the earnings? Because it's earnings season as well. Lots it, of companies posting their results. Exactly. In fact, in fact, the market moves in cycles. And the cycles largely relates to earnings as well as dividend declaration. Right. See? So when a company is, well, intends to declare a dividend, and it's fairly set per year each year. So we can anticipate when companies will declare dividends. Also, the financial year end. Most companies' financial year end is in December. Mm -hmm. You see? Nine months in September. So people anticipate these results. And as a result, if they believe the, price, the companies or the results are going to be good, then they'll begin to bid the prices up. You see? Interestingly also, not just the anticipation of the results, but the expectation is that this is when you will see directors and senior officers of the company uh, declare their intent in the coming future. Mm -hmm. So significant disclosures will be made as to the intended growth strategy of these respective companies. And investors generally anticipate that and begin to bid the prices up if they believe that the prices, you know. So which results companies' are going to results were you most impressed with? Uh, Excluding I, JMMB, I saw that you're up <laughs> yes, 35%. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was impressed with Wisinko. They have made some strategic moves over the last few months. But particularly, Wisinko, I think, has had a good brand as a private company. I think we have seen a few things over the last few years, especially when that significant fire destroyed. I think of one of their warehouses. Right, right. I think people look at the reaction of the management in maintaining workers. They were quick. They quickly rebounded. So when they came public, it was no surprise that they would have done well. Uh, subsequent to that, they have had largely a distribution company. Uh, they began to manufacture quite a few years back. Several very popular brands. Boom is mm -hmm. one. Uh, we know Cran Water. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think these are now manufacturing. They, they have moved from just distribution and warehousing to now manufacturing. And I think they have signed a strategic deal with, I think, Jamaica producers. I think they distribute food products and thing, and that has reaped some benefit. You know, so the results I expected to be good, but I did not anticipate it to be significantly well. Mm -hmm. And I think the market has reacted to that. Mm -hmm. Many times, though, the market don't wait on results. Really, sometimes, most times, the market anticipates. So good analysis, good research is important. Yes. You know? And the stock price really has begun to move from earlier January, uh, which was trading at about $10, $11. I uh, traded up to about $15 by, by February, March. And now the stock is trading at $22 wow. plus. That is significant appreciation. So wow. I tell you that investors are quite happy. Right. So let's talk about meal pack. There's a lot of excitement about it. Devroy, I know you pulled an all-nighter to read the prospectus Indeed. and write your review mm -hmm. over on CaribbeanValueInvestor.com. So what's your perspective on it? My perspective on meal pack is that this is one of, I, I want to call it one of the more interesting issues that we've seen to date. Um, meal pack has, I want to say, satisfied my curiosity and my concern, primarily that of the competition that was in the market. So in the prospectus, they make use of the analogy of KFC, whereas the competition that spurred up throughout the time when KFC was just starting to get into the market and to kind of tap the out-of-home out eating um, kind of scenario within Jamaica, there came up a lot of competition from like McDonald's and all of that, but all of those served the, the, the purpose of actually sensitizing the market to 
the offering and KFC being the dominant player there and a well-established brand was able to capitalize on that. I expect the same for Mailpack. Mm -hmm. What's more, we're seeing where Mailpack's intent for the use of funds for this IPO is going to clear that um, $263 million debt that mm -hmm. they have for their parent company. And that is going to also leave them open now to actually take on additional lines of um, credit or additional debt in order to further um, shore their position within the market and expand the company. So Clive, you said you've been looking at the numbers for Mailpac. Mm -hmm. What do you make of it, especially, well, the projections and their past performance? Mm -hmm. uh, Mailpac is a brand new company. It's the nature of its business is fairly new. And I think it provides diversification to the investing public. They've been uh, around since 1998, it's not brand new. Well, the, the consolidated group the is The consolidated new. group, the type of business that they are in, uh, it's not new, it's new really, within the Jamaican well, landscape. Well, it's fairly new in the Jamaican landscape, but it's also new for in intended public company. Um, the results are fairly okay, I'd say. Uh, but what is important though is the intended use of the proceeds. Mm -hmm. And they have said that they will use that to clear debt, which right. is important. Right, about half of it. Is exactly. that a good strategy for them? Most companies, I can tell you, that's one of the reasons they try to, to, to raise capital. Uh, debt, especially if debt is held, has been ongoing for the last several years. It might be expensive. Maybe they were locked into very expensive debt. Uh, that is indicated in the financial statement. So I think it leaves the company open or freer with a higher capital base from which it can take perhaps, I would say, more risk or expand its offerings. Okay. So I think it's a good uh, company. And I, I expect to and I encourage market players to diversify, you know. In fact, the index is made up of probably about 70, almost 70% 70 of financial companies, you know. We now have the manufacturing companies and distribution of this new index. This now is a new offering. So I urge the public to diversify. To, that, to reduce your risk though, you must decide with your advisor, how much do I place into this new Right, so of offering. the four, actually it's five, I forgot to mention select fund, Manufacturing oh, yes, and yes, distribution. Yes, yes. So of the five that are open at the same time, if you could only choose one out of those five, you only have money for one investment right now, Devroid, which one are you are going with? I'd go with Mailpack. Clive, which one are you going with? Well, can, I would have to put, I have to be careful here. Let right. me put a preamble to that. Eh? Uh, the investor will have to look at where they are in the investment life cycle. Eh? The investor will have to look at their risk appetite, you see. Now, I would say for a conservative investor, perhaps, the select manufacturing and the trading manufacturing Sajikor select yes mm -hmm. why because it has about 30 companies right. in it. it's more it's diversified very risk. diversified it has some of the larger jamaican companies in fact about 70 percent of its value are the eight or so nine stocks on the main market right. which are valid almost 300 billion including jamaican Wissing dollars Con, including wissink and grace Kennedy that continuously produces good results and the grace is highly well diversified it's a grace within itself has about 30 subsidiary mm -hmm. companies. So the more conservative person yes. you can go with Sajikor. Yes. Somebody who's not risk averse. Exactly. Which one would you take if you're not risk averse? If you're not risk averse. Hmm. Um, I'd perhaps go for, for a meal pack because I think that it's a brand new opportunity. You know, as the economy grows and people have spending power, they'll begin to buy more. And chances are, knowing our Jamaican entrepreneurs, they'll diversify into other areas. Perhaps, who knows? Maybe manufacturing, you know, maybe some other service delivery. So a meal pack, I think, for the person who is not risk averse, could perhaps put a little bit more. And again, it's not about taking one security. It's mm -hmm. about diversification. But how much do you put into each? Right. Yeah. For me, I think meal pack is a unique opportunity, um, as Clyde rightfully said. I also think that the growth potential of meal, of meal pack outstrips all the other current offers. Recently, mm. we saw um, in the paper on Friday also that JMMB is now going to be offering their Visa debit card. Right. And that will increase access for persons who are actually seeking to make purchases online. Um, Mailpack as well is intent on issuing their own um, MasterCard, Master, pack. MasterCard that will allow for their customers to actually um, purchase, make purchases overseas. Additionally, the agreement between Mailpack and Amazon, I think, is one that um, augurs well for the company. And looking at just the, gro the historic growth rate of Mailpack, 
um, and its business, I imagine that a, a forward growth of say 20 or 30 percent per year is one that we'll see this company pretty much easily doubling in size in the next five to um, seven years. Wow, wow, okay. And we haven't even had time to discuss Lumber Depot because of the time that it, it came up, mm -hmm. but perhaps next week for that mm -hmm. one. Thanks for joining us, Clive mm -hmm. Devroyd. Well, thank you for thank having you, me. Camilla. Okay, let's take our final break. Taking Stock, The Analysts was brought to you by Proven Wealth. Make a money market brokers at NCB Capital Market. Thanks for watching. That's our show for this week. Make sure you check out my other features Money Mondays JA, Money Moves JA, and What's in It for Me. On Money Mondays this week, I'm talking about mail packs. I'm going to give you my overview. That video is already up on all my social media channels. Later on this week, I'm going to be telling you all about JMMB's new Visa debit card, which is bound to be a game changer. So you definitely don't want to miss that. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Until next time.